Okay, in this video we are going to discuss about active and passive immunity. If uh, you want to understand more about this, you will have to go back to the previous video and see about the um, acquired immunity which uh, we uh, spoke mostly about this active immunity where the body's immune responses, own immune responses are activated. Now in this video we are going to see about the active and passive immunity. What is active and passive immunity? Now this active immunity is a long lasting immunity. It is long lasting. Uh, so uh, actually it involves the T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. So we dealt about this T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes in detail in the acquired immunity. So this immunity you develop as a result of a natural infection of a pathogen. So when a pathogen enters your body, maybe a bacterium or a virus, your body produces or the um, stimulates, this particular antigen stimulates the uh, immune response in your body. Okay, so now that is the natural infection. Or Artificial immunization also uh, can, uh, can be done. We will be uh, talking about artificial immunization in detail. So when antibodies are just uh, uh, what are injected into the body through vaccines. Mm -hmm. Now this is a long lasting immunity which is mediated by the action of B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. That is the uh, humoral response and the cell mediated response which we had discussed in the acquired immunity video uh, and uh, so you get a primary response where action uh, there is immediate action against the particular pathogen and uh, clone of cells are uh, formed a clone of cells uh, after proliferation uh, so some of them become uh, memory cells the B and T memory cells which take action uh, if confronted or if they meet the same antigen uh, later in life. Okay, so you have the primary and the secondary uh, immune responses. Okay. Now this active immunity, we said this is long lasting immunity. That means it can last throughout your life because these antigens have already been produced in your body and uh, because of these memory cells. Now, uh, this can be divided into the naturally acquired active immunity and artificially acquired active immunity. Naturally acquired active immunity, it is developed in response to natural infections of a pathogen as I told you. So, nat any pathogen getting into your body, your body produces uh, your immune system is stimulated to produce some antibodies or to activate the humoral or the uh, cell mediated immune response to destroy that particular pathogen. Now in artificially acquired active immunity, it can be induced artificially in the body against various infectious diseases through vaccinations. Now vaccination or immunization, so it is induced artificially in the body. Now, these uh, vaccinations, they introduce a vaccine in the body that triggers an immune response as though you have been exposed to a disease naturally. Okay, so these uh, vaccinations or immunizations are done by what are called vaccines. We will talk about vaccines in detail in this particular video. So, vaccines are nothing but um, uh, substances which contain an agent that resembles a disease causing microbe which has been weakened or attenuated. Therefore, it does not cause disease in the individual but it stimulates an immune response. Okay, so we will talk about these vaccines uh, later on in the video. Now, naturally acquired active immunity. Now, we are coming to the naturally acquired active immunity. It is a long lasting immunity developed against infectious disease in response to natural infections of pathogens. Okay. So, in response to disease causing agents entering the body naturally for the first time. 
example chicken pox virus now for example this virus chicken pox virus entering the body and the t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes are activated and produce specific cytotoxic t cells and antibodies to destroy the pathogen now at the same time what is happening memory b cells and t cells also are produced and are long lived and will provide a stronger and rapid immune response to destroy that particular antigen okay so you know we have discussed in the past video about the uh, memory cells which can become activated if the same antigen is met later in life and they produce a they get they differentiate out into the effector cells which produce a stronger and rapid response to that particular antigen so the same the same antigen the uh, chicken pox virus is encountered later in life so in this way the body can resist to subsequent infections of the same antigen so uh, this is uh, the uh, naturally acquired active immunity involving the t and b lymphocytes okay and the uh, memory cells now chicken pox virus these are the symptoms uh, which uh, chicken if a person infected with this chicken pox virus um, can cause blisters it can cause blisters uh, like a rash on the upper part of the chest neck back and face and then after that it can spread throughout the body and the person uh, gets fever and uh, it takes some time for it to go so these are the this is uh, how the uh, virus uh, in uh, this is one of the uh, symptoms which you can see on the body of a person infected by this particular uh, virus okay so now you come to the next part which is artificially acquired active immunity now this is also long lasting immunity induced artificially in the body against various infectious diseases through vaccination or immunization of attenuated attenuated means the virulence the disease causing capacity of the pathogen is reduced okay by in the laboratory uh, they are uh, taking these um, disease causing viruses or um, bacteria and they are subjecting it to some kind of uh, a treatment which weakens them so that they do not cause the disease but they can stimulate an immune response so uh, these are these attenuated pathogens only are used in the vaccines so a vaccine uh, so i told you a vaccine can contain killed or weakened pathogens so they are live pathogens which have been weakened therefore they cannot cause disease in the person but they can stimulate an immune response as though the person has already had the disease so uh, weakened pathogens inactivated bacteria or genes encoding microbial proteins now these genes encoding microbial proteins they are specific sequences of amino acids which are the building blocks of the proteins so Uh, all these can these types of uh, microbes can be used in the vaccines so actually a vaccine it does not cause the disease but it stimulate it acts as an antigen and stimulates an immune response in the body okay so it is uh, the, so immunization is carried out with various preparations of antigens which are the vaccines so now these vaccines uh, they stimulate the immune response in the body which uh, which is the cell mediated immune response or the anti antibody mediated immune the cell mediated immune response can directly kill the infected cells uh, the t lymphocytes we seen and the antibody mediated immune response the b lymphocytes which uh, secrete which proliferates in the plasma cells and secrete the antibody and mark the uh pathogen for inactivation and destruction now also uh, 
um, long lived memory cells are formed in the secondary response so the effector cells they take play, they they take action immediately and destroy the pathogen at the same time long lived memory cells are produced uh, t and b cells are produced so if the same pathogen is uh, met or uh, confronted years later uh, or some time later then these memory cells get activated and they can produce a stronger and more rapid response which directly can destroy the antigen okay so this is artificially acquired active immunity so this is also long lasting in the body because the body's immune system is stimulated to produce the response so this particular immune this kind of immunity can last for a long time in the body so this artificially acquired active immunity okay so if a pathogen from which the antigen was derived is encountered naturally later in the life long lived memory cells can provide a stronger and rapid response to destroy the pathogen that is what we seen in the last slide so antigens are used in vaccines are pre treated to be immunogenic immunogenic but not pathogenic that means these antigens in the vaccine so i told you these vaccines they can contain the uh, weakened pathogens or uh, killed microbes its toxins or one of its surface proteins okay so uh, they they are attenuated that means they cannot cause disease in the person so they are pre treated therefore they can uh be immunogenic they can stimulate the immune responses but they do not cause disease so it is as though the person has had the disease but they uh, they have not got the disease as such but they have developed immunity to that particular disease now here you have bcg vaccine this is used against tuberculosis disease so in man and has been prepared from a strain of attenuated live tuberculosis bacteria so these live tuberculosis bacteria have been taken and they have been uh, attenuated or weakened in the labs and they have been used in the particular vaccine now tuberculosis is a disease which uh, uh, it uh, uh, you get a fever and coughing which lasts for about 2 3 weeks and blood in the sputum chest pain coughing uh, uh weight loss fatigue fever chills all these are some of the symptoms of the uh, person having the uh, tuberculosis so uh, when bcg vaccine is administered in the uh, early in life so therefore the, it's a prevention so they develop antibodies in their body against this particular bacterium therefore they are protected for life they are protected from this uh, infection and they don't develop the tuberculosis now there is another one also polio vaccine consists of live attenuated polio strain polio virus strain this polio we call it polio what is polio myelitis virus causing this uh, particular uh, polio so polio vaccine produces antibodies in the bloods against this polio virus and uh, this protects the individual by preventing the spread of the polio virus to the nervous system now in polio also the person uh, they become very uh, the nervous system of the person is affected and they they lose the uh, capacity of movement uh, we'll see in the next few slides now here uh, we seen about the tuberculosis um, bacterium uh, so when it affects mostly the lungs it can affect other organs also but uh, some of the symptoms of this tuberculosis fever night sweats persistent cough and bloody phlegm uh, when they cough out blood comes out together with that uh, with the phlegm 
chest pain, shortness of breath, all these are some symptoms of the tuberculosis. So, uh, they, if they have been, you can see some of the um, tuberculosis bacteria which destroys the lung tissue. Okay, in this particular photo, and uh, this BCG vaccine which has to be given uh, early in life to uh, children, therefore they do not uh, get the infection of this tuberculosis bacterium. Mm. Poliomyelitis, I told you, uh, it is a normal term. In normal terms, it goes by the name of polio. It is an extremely contagious viral infection which directly attacks the nervous system. You can see that. Now, uh, so this is transmitted through contaminated food and water. It's a virus which is transmitted through the uh, contaminated food and water and the fecal oral route also. Can it can be uh, prevented through immunization? So this also, when the child is uh, in very early stages, so in uh, they have to be given these uh, this polio vaccine. So, uh, uh, so it can only be prevented through immunization. So, children under 5 years old are particularly vulnerable to the polio virus. So, you can see that. So, inactivated polio vaccine is given by injection. Uh, 3 doses and 1 extra. Schedule is uh, given at 2, 3 or 5 months old with the additional dose given at 18 months. So, vaccinations are critical to protect infants from these preventable diseases. So, the complication symptoms you can see most uh, critical one is the muscle atrophy. So, they are not, the muscles are, you know, wasted and paralysis, limb paralysis, central nervous system is attacked. It's a virus which attacks the nervous system and difficulty in breathing, headache, all these symptoms can arise. So, it is, uh, this particular virus is transmitted through contaminated food and water, fecal contaminant, with fecal contaminant. So, by prevention, you have to uh, wash your hands and sanitation facilities, boil water, drinking boil water, uh, and yeah, be cautious with undercooked food and peel fruit, remove dirt and germs, all that has to be done. But the most important thing is the immunization or the uh, vaccination of the uh, children. So, passive immunity is a short term immunity developed in the body due to the transfer of antibodies uh, produced by another individual. Just there is a transfer of anti antibodies from which have been produced in another individual. So, the body does not have to produce its own antibodies. There is no immune response evoked as such. Just the antibodies are produced and other individual and they are just passively transferred. Now, this gives immediate protection from that particular um, disease. For example, if they have, they have developed tetanus or uh, hepatitis A or they are bitten by a snake or a rabid dog, then this can, uh, the immediate transfer of antibodies, the it pro immediate protection is there. Uh, and the body does not develop memory as passive immunity does not involve recipients T cells and B cells. So, there is no memory here because T cells and B cells are not uh, involved in this and uh, they are not stimulated. The uh, humoral or, act or the cell, uh, cell mediated or the humoral response is not involved here because T and B cells are also not involved. Uh, so, no memory is there. Then passive immunity persists only until the transferred antibodies last. That means few weeks to few months only. Mm. So, you can't, that's not a lifetime guarantee of anything. So, uh, so this uh, passive immunity can be developed as a result of transferring antibodies to the recipient naturally or artificially. This can be done naturally or artificially. So, passive immunity involves uh, natural uh, natural or artificially, uh, or na uh, 
okay and the recipient is at risk of being infected by the same pathogen later unless they acquire active immunity or vaccination okay so uh, unless they uh, acquire active immunity or vaccination they are risk at being infected by the same pathogen later so there is no kind of um, uh, since it is not uh, uh, what is that active immunity it is a short term immunity the passive immunity <coughs> just for uh, that particular time period now this passive immunity can be naturally acquired passive immunity or artificially acquired passive immunity naturally acquired passive immunity we said it is short term antibody mediated immunity for some infectious diseases and can be developed within the body of the fetus so the short term immunity antibody mediated and uh, for some infectious disease and can develop in the body of the fetus or the nursing infant now due to natural transfer of antibodies by the mother from the mother okay so the transfer of antibodies to the fetus blood from the mother's blood across the placenta so direct transfer is there or antibodies can also pass from the mother to the infant through the colostrum that is the first form milk and during the breastfeeding okay so the baby develops resistance against some infectious disease for a short time so that also short time period only the immunity is uh, guaranteed or lasts for a short time until its own immune system is fully functional so this type of immunity it is a short uh, it's only for a short period so antibody mediated when is direct transfer of antibodies passive transfer from the mother to the baby through the placenta or through the breast milk okay until its own immune system is functional now artificially acquired passive immunity it is a temporarily induced defensive protection achieved by the transfer of antibodies artificially to the blood of the recipient not naturally but it is artificially transferred to the recipient from somewhere else from another source so it's temporarily induced mm. uh, now these ready made antibodies can be administered as blood plasma or serum okay you know what the blood plasma is now when you centrifuge blood you uh, you get the upper portion of the blood separates out as the plasma and uh, the cells and all are, they settle at the, at the bottom of the tube now serum is blood plasma minus the fibrinogens okay blood plasma contain the fibrinogens and all that but the serum it is blood plasma minus the fibrinogens okay now uh, so these ready made antibodies can be administered as plasma or serum which can be human or animal okay and as injections they are administered as injections of pooled human immunoglobin pooled immunoglobin human immunoglobin from it is made from human blood with high level of antibodies that means they collect the blood of different uh, people and from there they get the antibodies pooled by uh, thousands and thousands of people donating blood they get the uh, antibodies who have been immunized they get the antibodies from these people okay and immunized donors from immunized donors so injections of pooled human immunoglobin from immunized donors so those donors have already been immunized uh, by some vaccines out and the antibodies uh they have which have been formed in the uh, blood they are used okay uh, or as uh, monoclonal antibodies monoclonal antibodies these monoclonal antibodies now we see that um, different clones are formed isn't it in a, when antigen uh, when a person is infected with uh, pathogen or antigen what will happen is that Uh, these uh, antibodies are formed and uh, um, you get uh, different clones are formed many different clones are formed but uh, monoclonal antibodies mean they are specific 
so laboratory produce molecules so they are engineered so they are made in the laboratory to serve as a substitute antibody so they serve as substitute antibodies to enhance immune systems attack on cancer cells so they are made to target and uh, uh, they they are made to target the cancer cells for destruction okay that's all called that's all, those are called the monoclonal antibody okay so uh, mainly used in ca cancer uh, to uh, attack cancer cells but they can be used in other uh, diseases infectious diseases also now passive transfer of antibodies is used to prevent some infectious diseases when infectious agents are suspected to have accidentally entered the body okay now sir some uh, for example hepatitis a vaccine that they made human serum antibodies for hepatitis a hepatitis a also this virus affects the liver and uh, the person you get person gets jaundice yellowing of the skin and the urine becomes yellow and so on and it's also caused by the uh, eating contaminated food and water and all that. Mm, so here also ready made human serum antibodies uh, can be administered uh, to um, uh, prevent this uh, infection okay we we find that these and these uh, infectious agents have and this virus has entered it is also used the treatment of several types of acute infections ready made human anti tetanus immunoglobulin for acute conditions of tetanus here this uh, particular bacterium clostridium tetanae it's an anaerobe so it can you know uh, it attacks the nervous system so these people they get what are called what is called locked jaw and uh, the muscles become muscle spasms paralysis and all that mm, difficulty in breathing death also can kind occur of, uh, so uh, so these these uh, anti tetanus immunoglobulin also can be ready made human anti tetanus immunoglobulin for this tetanus can be administered mm, and uh, poisoning from venomous snake bite anti venom so that is serum prepared from horses the, that have been immunized against snake venom so when horses have been uh, uh, immunized uh, antibodies are formed in their blood and these antibodies are removed in the serum and uh, from their blood and they are been administered at, as anti venom during if a snake has bitten a person so they provide immediate immunity and protects the person uh, at that moment at that particular moment so they can't wait for a long time so instantly these antibodies by direct transfer of antibodies the person's uh, uh, immune system is immediately uh, these antibodies directly go and kill the uh, um, inactivate those toxins uh, toxins or those uh, microbes so immunity derived from artificially acquired passive immunity it lasts only for few weeks to four months mm, so this doesn't uh, no guarantee for this uh, only uh, in a very short time this uh, protection is there only for a very short time now here symptoms of tetanus you get the lock jaw mm, difficult in swallowing shortness of breath body spasms affects the nervous system and the muscles and all that so the person uh, these are the symptoms which uh, appear in the tetanus caused by the bacterium clostridium tetanae and uh, human immunoglobulin anti tetanus for intramuscular injection mm. so igg now the, this is a slide giving you the difference between the plasma and serum which i told you so plasma is a liquid cell free part of the blood that contains clotting factors it contains a fibrinogen okay unclotted whole blood whereas here serum is a liquid part of the blood after clotting therefore it is devoid of clotting factor no fibrinogen so serum is the plasma minus the fibrinogen
Now I told you uh, in this hepatitis A, this is a jaundice, yellowing of the skin and the urine becoming yellow, eyes becoming also yellowish in color. So the best way is that to uh, prevent uh, hepatitis A is through vaccination with hepatitis A vaccine. Hepatitis A is one of the few foodborne illnesses that can be prevented through vaccination. And here antivenin. I told you uh, during a snake bite, when a snake bites, this antivenin is given by uh, serum which has been uh, withdrawn from the horses which have been immunized. I spoke to you about monoclonal antibodies also which uh, uh, they are of a they are, they are uh, produced from a single clone of cells and they target specific um, anti they, they, uh, epitopes. Okay, so they lock on to specific epitopes only uh, and is, uh, are able to target the uh, cancer cell for destruction. They are genetically, they are engineered engineered um, uh, cells which are able to uh, attack the cancer cells and mark them for inactivation.